Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Beyer. How are you doing, Dave? I'm doing well. How are you, Jonathan? Just lovely. Is anything going on in figure skating this week? Not much. <laughs> is this skating lesson? We are going to be discussing everything that's happening in figure skating this week. So if you're new here, yeah, subscribe below. Oh my goodness, Jonathan, I cannot. Where to begin? Where to begin? Let's talk about how the ISU is tweeting out the ISU Awards. Can they get ISU award to a Canadian? Brian Orris or Lifetime? Uh, honestly, I see the tweets come up and I'm like, who gives a shit? <laughs> right? Like, is anyone... Timing, timing, folks. Like, and, you know, we've talked about this in the past. I think it's a little problematic for the governing body to issue awards like best choreographer and most valuable skater and best costume. Seven. Who cares? Who I, cares? If, yeah, I don't is think there anyone, anyone that you yeah. would want an award from less? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Mia Hamada, coach of Listen, the I think they had a good idea. Ari, I'm just going to say it. I think the awards are a waste of everybody's time and money, and they mean absolute nothing. Okay? Okay? Ilya Malin and Most Valuable Skater? Whatever. Most Valuable Skater is whoever is going to get them a paycheck in this over-expensive sport. So, I don't know. Anyone? No. Like, come on. Like, um, maybe focus on your communications department. Yes. Or maybe. my calculator. Yeah. Yeah, maybe put the yeah. money there. Uh, yeah. Okay, Jonathan, how are you feeling about everything? I mean, you know, I've well, been... I mean, <clears throat> I was impressed that they actually clarified, felt the need to to comment that no, the standings will not change by leading off the the press release with "We will be more transparent and we will tell you all the things," and then it was like, "Oh, and by the way, that rule doesn't count here." It just like totally dismissed it. I was going back because when you were talking to Phil, he had said this is exactly what he anticipated they would pull by claiming the team event is its own thing and the other rules are only applicable to the individual events. He felt they intentionally were vague in the wording of the of the team rules for an event like this so they can just do whatever they want. Yeah. Yeah. It makes not a lick of sense. And, and it was just the juxtaposition with the first paragraph saying, we're going to be on the up and up now. And then they weren't. And how about all of these Canadians who are coming out there saying, I think an appeal is really important. And then you think a Canadian is running the ISU. How's that going to go? Yeah. Yeah. If it hasn't happened already, do you know what I mean? Canada, who is upset that someone claimed that they had no political power? <laughs> well... <laughs> And clearly do not. Yeah. Clearly. Yeah. I, I just, the whole thing is just such a mess. It's a no-win situation no matter what. It's so tainted. I mean, I think there is a win in it. I, who, what are we kidding? Okay, at this point. Come on. Yeah. If you read the Valjeva verdict... And you start to go into, and you've read Rodchenkov's book. I got to, we went through the verdict on TSL Live on Friday night. Jenny went to bed. We spent another three hours because a couple people just like, can I unmute and ask you a question? It started the deluge of people just unmuting. It was like the book club, which pretty much never happened. Yeah. Okay. And someone was like, I'm a, because we were also discussing Gracie's book and people had questions and someone's like, well, I'm a therapist and I'm a psychologist and I'm a chemical engineer and this person works in politics and this person's a lawyer. So we were asking all the questions about why the verdict was written the way that it was. And does this mean that the court was annoyed and insulted? The answer is yes, uh, by the entire um, thing. So we were going over like all of like, it, it felt, it's like house of cards when you really start to, uh, I, I read it and you understand why it was written the way it was. Like, the document wasn't written to defend Camilla. No. Like, maybe she thought it was. Yeah. I, I don't know. But it wasn't. Okay. Yeah. They had a 15 year old with a limited education giving testimony to who, who from day one in the system has been told to just do what she's told. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think any 15 year old okay. in that situation is a free thinking individual. Yeah. yeah. So I know Phil was like, I don't want to say that all of Team T Parades is dope. They have three doctors in the rink. 
Well, and you raised a very interesting point. Jonathan, they have three doctors in the rink and a masseuse. Hackensack has a snack stand. <laughs> yeah. It has a rental skate shop for like the two days a year. They even do that anymore because every rink just books it out with hockey. Right. Um, and there's a pro shop where you can buy hockey equipment and get your skates sharpened. Not on call 60, 60 medication pharmacies. They have three doctors in a rink and look at what their specialties are. <laughs> yeah. Well, and like you say, so many times these other federations have brought over those coaches to produce almost no results because again, the, the, the secret ingredient wasn't the coach. Yeah. yeah. Bringing Nina Moser over and it yielded nothing. Can you imagine how much the Russians are laughing their asses off when like U.S. figure skating wants to hire Nina Mosier to teach her athletes? I don't know, without Dr. Shevetsky, without the neurotransmitters, without the 10 hours of training a day on 60 different supplements, all of which can be used to hide urine. Like these people, and then like, ugh, the fans are so nice, but they are so in the dark, right? And it's, it it's sad, right, that people don't understand. But I got an email this morning just about creatine alone from a chemical engineer, okay? Hi, Dave. I'm not sure if you were the Emily that were referring to who wanted to message me, but I'm an Emily and I was on your Zoom Friday night. I don't think she's one of the Emilies who's speaking. And I have thoughts on Camilla's supplements list. I'm a former chemical engineer, so I know enough to be, enough to be dangerous. And these are just theories. Two things stand out to me. Creatine. Creatine is used by many athletes um, and could be innocent. Creatine could also be used to manipulate a urine test result. When a urine sample is taken, there are two tests used to determine if the sample is concentrated or dilute. Urine specific gravity or creatine sample. In both cases, elevated creatine levels could make it look like the sample is concentrated and thus would need to be diluted before interpreting the results. Mm. Think about all the stuff about them not drinking water and all right. about that. Right. This and obviously this obviously would help someone pass a drug test, as drugs in urine would fall below the detection limit. I could explain this more if you were interested. Creatine levels would have to be calculated carefully too high, and it would be dismissed. Interestingly, creatine is also excreted at the same rate as TMZ. So I feel any doctor administering TMZ to not be detected would also be skilled enough to get the correct dose of creatine. Mm. This is the level of things that are going on when she has 60 supplements, okay? Right. right. That they're admitting to. Right. She also had a steroid that showed up in her urine that they haven't even accounted for. And that right. only came out in the verdict. Okay? <laughs> like, then it goes into potassium. Like, this is like really a high level stuff. Um, she goes... There was only one supplement that contained significant amounts of potassium, but several supplements that contain significant amounts of magnesium and many supplements that contain calcium. To me, this is suspicious because I feel someone as weight conscious as a Terry would use every method to get her skaters skinny for their performance. And potassium supplements are a good if dangerous tool to do so. Given all of the reports about Atari athletes not drinking water at the Olympics and reports of Russian athletes taking hours to produce a urine sample, I feel it is highly, highly likely they are water cutting or drying out to remove as much water weight as possible before competitions. I'm also a former anorexic and very familiar with cutting water, so Camilla's supplements really stood out to me. The most effective way to do a water cut is potassium, magnesium, and calcium supplements in the final days of the cut, with potassium being by far the most effective and the most dangerous to manipulate. This forces the body to excrete sodium and water to maintain the potassium-sodium balance that is essential to proper heart functioning. Remember she had athletic heart disease too? Mm -hmm. um, and there's also that there's a bilary uh, issue that she had that's also suspicious and they didn't even go into that. Interestingly, one of the ways that TMZ works is that from my understanding, it ruthlessly preserves the potassium sodium balance and can actually cause elevated potassium levels in some cases, which can be deadly. Although there are legit legitimate uses for athletes taking magnesium supplements, I do have to wonder if the lack of taking any potassium supplements while taking multiple different versions of other electrolytes 
is a tell that they are taking heart medication. Also of note is that if you have impaired kidney functioning, close to Naya at Junior Worlds, you need to have a low potassium diet and likely could not take TMZ or cardiac glycosides. Impaired kidney functioning could also slow the rate of excretion of drugs like TMZ. I'm by no means an expert on this, but I also wonder if taking potassium supplements in the process of water cutting would help get rid of any drugs that were still in your system. I mean, all right. So like, let's be real here. Okay? Extensive, extensively researched and planned. Yeah. Okay. All of this kind of stuff is that he's talking about in there, comes up in there. People are like, oh my God, but she's just taking vitamins. It's like, uh, when you start to realize that it's, that they they believe that there is a cocktail of drugs that's being given with the creatine, the hypoxy, uh, the, sorry, the L-carnitine, the hypoxin, and the TMZ together. Remember how um, Rodchenkov had a cocktail in 2014? It looks like Shvetsky has a cocktail as well for mm. other for figure skaters. I, I, you don't even know what to say. I, I just think, oh, think about what that is doing to their body post-skating. Yeah. It's just, it, for what? I, I, it's it's just horrifying. It's mm -hmm. horrifying. And then you I see mean, an 11-year-old doing a triple axle, triple axle, triple toe. I mean, and there's no shame because they had the Russian Junior Championships this weekend. You posted that quad. Yeah. There's no shame about it. Yeah. No care. Yeah. It's uh, To me, it's just not something to be celebrated. So if you look at the way that document is written, and I'm going to do an extensive video on it that I have been researching and going through and talking to people, it's really written to protect Ateri, to protect Shevetsky. So all of this stuff that Valieva is the most talented, I would argue that Shevetsky is the most talented person in Russian figure skating. And again, as we've mentioned before, everyone's like, how could you do it? He's been caught before. This was a figure skater who was good for two years. She hasn't been good since. They've right. had to inflate her marks, right? It's Shevetsky, yeah, what are you gonna say? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I, I, it's mm -hmm. just sort of, you think, oh, he's been caught before, why do they keep using him? And I think it, it begs the question, like, how much is he really doing? Because I'm gonna guess he's actually been caught a very low percentage. Yes. Compared to, to, to the work he's actually doing. And I just, I don't know. It, it, the problem not only is that they, they have employed these methods, but in doing so also changed the sport because all these other reactionary federations try to mimic the aesthetic, mimic the 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 technical content. And to me, that's when women's skating in particular took such a dive in the overall aesthetic. That's we used to talk about personalities, right? We used to talk about Ashley and Gracie. Now, when we were watching Junior Worlds last year, I was in such a bad mood because I thought these skaters all look mechanical. They all look the same. They all look freakishly thin and it's uncomfortable to watch. And there's no presentation even going on anymore. So the ISU awards, maybe they should change their rules and bring back the actual sport. And maybe right. if, and even think about it. If this is when Russia is banned that they're giving them a bronze medal, what do you think is going to happen when they come back? Right. And again, the, the strange the thing about- Canadian it, is in charge of the ISU, Benoit Lavoie. Okay, like, come yeah. on, okay? Yeah. But it was interesting because I also, in your Meet the Olympic Press, Phil was talking about him dropping the ball and not really being able to do anything in 2002. Yeah, because everybody's afraid of the Russians, okay? Because yeah. they have how many judges in the council and the panel, okay? Yeah. Come yeah. on. I, it's just so bleak. Think about when the when their pairs weren't winning. Right, and so they changed the rules. And it was only a very few number of years, right? Yeah. They changed the rules to get rid of the quads. Now they've figured out the quads, they talk about bringing them back. Because Megan and Eric were getting too good at them. The Chinese right. were getting too good at them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and conversely, instead you want children to be doing them. 11 year olds, that's, that's, so that's healthy, but then the quad twist and the quad throw isn't. Okay, oh, all right. Yeah. And you want an ISU awards? Please. I just, I only ever watched one. I don't know if it was the first one they did when it was like Brian Orser, like on a Zoom call live only to find out a Terry had won. 
and like his facial expression <laughs> in that moment to be like, what am I doing here? It, I, I just think the whole thing is problematic though. The whole thing is cringe. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I would rather get a colorectal exam than watch the ISU awards. I like, I, I don't have any interest. Yeah. Well, and again, in a week where, in my opinion, they have lost all credibility. What credibility did they have before it? More but, yeah. than they have this week. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Not a lot, but more than they had after they released that response. So, I don't know. I, I, do, I, I don't think anything will happen. No, of course not. I think because they're going to in their heels on this. I'm sorry, but Canada and Japan talking about it now? No, this is why no one can stand up to Russia because nobody fights together. It's exactly how dictators come to power. What mm -hmm. they would have had to do is all band together when it actually happened, along with other fe other federations, you know, they would have needed to gather Italy and Spain and this one and that one. And they're all too self-interested and nervous that they're right. going to be affected by the Russians. And what are they getting from them, right? That's why no one's doing it, okay? Right. right. We've all had to back up together. And guess what? You don't think the ISU and the IOC had some sort of a backroom deal to figure this whole thing out? Like, come on, okay? The people that are, like when Cinquanta was running the ISU, he was also on the IOC. It's not like these bodies are independent and the IOC is gonna be like, oh, I was really surprised about that ISU decision, Christine. Like, yeah. come on. Yeah. <laughs> How about when Steve Penny was working for USAG and was offering Larry Nasser a job at the USOPC? Like these, Organizations aren't strictly like independent right. silos. So it's time that people get real about what's actually going on. And then I, I just think about all of this stuff in the skaters and something that Gracie said in the book really hit home when she was talking about the metal drought, right? Because that's something that that's an attitude, right? About like you think about why skating is doing so poorly in the US, but think about how NBC supports winners. Our entire Olympic system is actually designed around money and medals, okay? Right at every level, okay? Yep. It's not just someone being evil, okay? So what happens is, is that the US OPC funds, uh, you know, Skate Canada, or funds, you know, I'm sorry, US OPC funds US figure skating. The Canadian Olympic Committee funds Skate Canada. Part of that funding is determined based on results that they achieve at the Olympics. So if Skate Canada were to get that bronze medal at the Olympics, think of the funding that they would have had over the last years. And on the heels of COVID, when Canada had to shut down so many times, which killed right. so many skaters, think about how much that really would affect them, right? Think about everything that's going wrong. Then you have to go to the fact that medals and results determine interest in the sport with articles, right? So right. then think about it. Okay, so Gracie and Ashley were two of the biggest stars in skating based on their performance. Now, they didn't always get all of the international results. They did win a lot of Grand Prix where they would have to go against a limited number of top Russians, right? Like maybe you go against one of the good ones, maybe two, but not like at Worlds, we have to go through three. Okay, because usually there's like the token one, you know, they'd send like a Sotskova or who, yeah. you know. <laughs> Right? Like there are the ranked skaters and then there's like the third, right? No, not being offensive. That's just like how it works when you're like going. <laughs> yes. Right? No, because everybody takes everything to put it on Reddit to, you know, determine. Oh, I'm just being like who the medal winners are. You know, it's like Ashley and Gracie would go against like two people who could legitimately win a medal at the Grand Prix. Okay. Right. All right. So think about it. The, even their individual lives, and you think about like the pressure that they are under and how much skaters are struggling. I had a conversation with Alyssa Sisney about whether or not she made money from skating. And I asked her yesterday, or two days ago on the phone, I said, did you make enough money in skating to justify the investment your parents put in it? Well, she was like, well, skating changed my life. I said, yes, no, 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 but just financially. Just the numbers, yeah. No. <clears throat> and she was like, oh. But she got invited to do shows. And she got invited and she said, but when she was competing in one Grand Prix, the US, it was the US OC at the time, because now they're all about the Paralympics. So they're now like one, right? So right. They, they put that in the title. I hate when organizations change. I know. 
really <laughs> frustrating and organizing. Like the USFSA becoming the USFS. You yeah. can't just do the USOC because then people are going to think that you're being mean about Paralympics, even though it was the USOC in, in 2010, 2011. So, okay. All right. So I'm just going to say that it was the USOPC, even though at the time it was called the USOC. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a semantics. I have nothing against well, the very organized, Dave. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. All right, I have nothing against the Paralympians, okay? Even though no one watches their Olympics, we pretend, you know, that it's like really, you know, okay. So, USOC would give, would match the funding. So let's say back when she won, let's say a Grand Prix was worth 18,000. Well, you just won 36,000. Mm. Maybe you just got invited to a show in Japan off of that winning moment that you had because now everyone thought, oh my God, the moment in the skating. So think about worlds. Like we talk about Tuk Dimitrova when she was on Meldonium. Well, she admitted that she was on Meldonium. And think about like how much energy she had at the end of that program that she never had again at the end of ever before. Ever, her career. yeah. Okay? Ever. At the end of the program. And we all loved her. And she was great. And she was fun. And she was that. But look at the 60 supplements that they're taking what we're talking about with potassium and Rachenko and all of that, right? So like food for thought, let's say they're all doping. So imagine if that athlete weren't allowed to complete because Russia were, had been banned. Let's just say Russia was banned after Sochi. That's easier because then we don't have to go into which athlete is doping or not. Let's say Russia had a ban because they were, they were cheating at the Sochi Olympics. We just said, no, you were not an Olympic sport. Ashley and Gracie would have medaled at 2015 Worlds. Yep. Ashley and Gracie would have won at 2016 Worlds. Look at gymnastics and the, how the medal winners are celebrated. Then look at how the big corporate sponsors that are Olympic sponsors want to sponsor the athletes. So CoverGirl, Johnson & Johnson, all of those things start putting money, commercials, attention. These people become much bigger stars. Then their lives become changed, right? Someone that just had like a couple good results becomes Ali Raisman, right? Someone, and then you start to see, oh, oh. Everything would have changed, yeah. Instead, it's not, well, why can't we compete with the Russians? It's, oh my God, yes, queen, that Moulin Rouge was awesome. The entire narrative would have changed. Yeah. How every fan discussed the athletes would have changed. The tweets about figure skating would have changed. Corporations would have seen those tweets. They would have sponsored more and more athletes. Think about the sponsorships that would have come into U.S. figure skating. Think of the money, the commercials, the attention. And then you think, oh my God, the sport is dying right now. Yeah, because no one ever stood up to any of this. Yeah. And that was the period where the transition was happening to these formulaic programs, but people were still fighting at them. You had Moulin Rouge. You had like Satoko, like who would then be a world champion in this this scenario. Like people were still trying to give you performance factor, and then it was just pointless. Gone. It, it, it's then you had Junior Worlds last year. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's reactionary. I think they see they see it, and they're like, I guess that's what we're supposed to do. And it, 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 so many of the of the camps that were really doing good work almost gave up on it. We follow skating pretty intensely, right? Yes. But there are some skaters that don't stand out, okay? Right. And if they're not from this country, I don't know yeah. they're doing. It has nothing to do, like, it's like... Interchangeable, so many, so many. Mainly, mainly, I'm uh, as a fan. I'm experiencing it in the women's event. I don't know. Jason Brown was one of the only men who even looked like he enjoyed skating at nationals, where there was a visual enjoyment factor. Yeah. Think about Boston Worlds at Adam Rapon doing that like campy Beatles program, or even Grant Hotchkin, or even Max Aaron. God bless him when he's uh, doing Footloose or whatever he was. <laughs> Right, right, right. <laughs> that was a personality at the end right. of the day. Even if he looked like he hated his programs, he had personality while doing it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. His hatred was entertaining. Okay. It was a performance. Yeah. <laughs> it was something. Yeah. Now, I don't know who would randomly stumble on it on TV and then want to stay with it. No. If it was just casually on. 
Mm -hmm. used to then just like you would see people get drawn in as they start to see it and this i think it's very easy to be like oh it's skating mm. they seem the spins look really slow now i guess and then walk away yeah i don't know new fans coming in as a result oh, it's something to watch like once a year yeah. oh it's snowing let's watch nationals <laughs> Right. I don't. I mean, I really wonder this, Dave. If we, we were, we got into skating around that same time in the early '90s. If we were that age now, I don't know that I would be getting drawn into it. No way. We got addicted at a young age. It's like getting addicted to heroin. You can't get off, right? But <laughs> no, I don't think it would have been the same thing right now. Yeah, I don't know because I was drawn into the personalities, comparing the different programs and athletes, seeing all this sort of stuff. And and it was through television also. I, I just, in in 2024, I don't know how a young Jonathan would have stumbled on it. And if- your first broadcast? What was your first broadcast? Probably 92 Olympics. Do you, what's, like, what's your first skating memory of what you watch? Uh, Christy. Christy and the Malaganya. And the Blue Danube. Sam, you were going like that, and the whole yes. camp, and then like Nancy with her hair pulled way too tight being like upset as she got off the ice. And then you have her like campy coaches in their trench coats. And you have Christy Ness who looked like a very fancy flight attendant. And you had Tracy who was in her glitzy out. I mean, it was hot camp. Different things. You had a Christy, which was different than a Nancy, which is different than a Midori, which is, you know, different than a like, What the hell was Surya wearing? She had that matador costume, but then there were pom-poms. Right. And then people would be like, well, that was a designer. And you're like, what did, what did the count say? It was a good one. <laughs> Even Louis Vuitton makes mistakes, darling. <laughs> you know, like that was. <laughs> <laughs> what, where did we read that? Was it one of those like Beverly Smith books where they were the reviewer, like some reviewer of the Olympics called it like Hugh Hefner's garage sale or something like that? There was a quote from like the French press that was kind of amazing. Sorry, go back to the 92 Olympics. It was a train wreck in the greatest of ways. Okay. In the most entertaining in the most, you know, engaging sort of way. And so then it was really 94 was my first Olympics where I was like, knew the things and was really following. And again, you had a lot of apples and oranges in an event where now it's just all the same mediocre fruit. I mean, come on. Do you feel like we were robbed of, of more of left pieces with Christopher Bowman and Frank Carroll? I mean, the yang and the yang of that. I mean, come yeah. on. Okay. Yeah, but that, that brought us in. Come on. Imagine that if we could have asked uh, Frank, Frank, do you think Christopher Bowman was smoking the devil's lettuce? Like, come on! <laughs> but you know what else was, was interesting about that era is I felt like I was rooting for adults. Yes, you like, were. This, this thing where I'm like, did I just spend several hours on a Saturday watching like 13 year olds on 60 supplements like ruining their bodies forever? And you're like, this isn't this isn't really the vibe. Does everyone love Deanna because it's a comeback story and this and that and the other? Yes, but it's also just kind of nice to root for like a grown up person. Oh my God, she's one of the last interesting people that we talk about. Thank she got God. You award today. She got one. Yeah, it was like a special award. Whatever. Every week of the skating lesson is basically an award to Deanna and Sandra Bezik anyway. So, like, I don't give a shit, okay? Deanna, we gave you an award every year of her life. I told her, I said, Deanna, Valentine's Day is coming up. You're in a show with Alexa. I would like the two of you to take a photo, and I want you to hold a piece of paper that says, thank you, F you, love you, happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> We'll frame it and put it above our beds, right? Yeah, Come on. It'll be like if Ashley fun. Wagner could have been there, it would be the Holy Trinity. Okay. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Amazing. You know, Jonathan, who used to get, what did it take to be the number one person in the Young and the Restless intro? The key spot was the first skater. It was Alexa. She wasn't the original. She wasn't? It went, it went Ashley. That's right. Then it was Alexa. Today it would be Deanna. And do you know what that spot is for? The more interest, the most interesting person we want to talk about. Not like Han Yu, because all of his fans will like applaud him doing the same program for 10 years in a show. No, no, no. Yeah. Interesting personality to follow. Yeah. Ashley, yeah. Alexa, 
You want someone who is going to kiss you, break your face. Like you want to applaud them. You want them to tell you off over text message. You want, you want to celebrate their victory. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Well, even I, I, I have always. You see Ashley Wagner, like post baby dancing around in Spanx. She's reclaiming her body. Like we are on a journey with Ashley Wagner. Do you understand? Okay. <laughs> We don't have that with these athletes today. We don't know anything about Isabeau. We don't know that, like, that, well, like again, Dave. What, like, I always think back to the the St. Paul Nationals, where do you we know any skater today. Wait, wait, okay. Do you know any skater today at St. Paul Nationals who's going to go date a woman for the for the first time and then in their book? refer to them as Ellen, like Ellen DeGeneres, the first lesbian on television. Are you kidding me? That is so genius, okay? But I mean, again, to the adult thing, it was fun to have a drink with Alexa and Chris. It was fun to have a drink with Ashley Wagner and all these people. You can't do that because these are children now. <laughs> There's they no- also don't say, Do you want to have a drink with Vincent Joe? I'm sorry, I'll pass. Exactly, that's what I'm saying, yeah. No shit, yeah. good for him to get his gold medal. Like, but- yeah. What would we talk about? Right. And that lack of perspective shows in, in sort of what's missing to me. Like, what would you want to talk to Gracie about? I don't know, everything? Right? Any, anything she wanted. Yeah. It'd be <laughs> anything like, she wanted. Why don't you lead us in, Gracie? Gracie. What did you say? Gracie, how are you feeling today? What, do you, what would you like to talk about? <laughs> Let's talk about that. Because we, we had the book club and some of the comments that they think they're like being provocative i'm like you're just proving the point of the book someone was like this book is terrible it might it might taint the memory of her skating career for fans and i was like uh you, that's the point of the book. <laughs> or you know oh she shouldn't be complaining or oh, the, she they are literally quoting the problematic sections of the book where gracie brings that up or when gracie brings up like, that silly gilman messaged me that gracie shouldn't blame skating she hadn't read the book yet. Oh, well, th okay, then that's why. And also, it's Rather like than, the imagine, damn book. You know my actual comments. Imagine if I were actually unfiltered. Okay. <laughs> like, no, I, I can I can testify to this that Dave really is filtered. <laughs> I promise. I promise. <laughs> there's there's a lot more. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, but it, it's just a. Do you it's realize that, I, that my number one fear in life is going back into the office after COVID? Because one, I've done all of this therapy to become more authentic. And two, you've gotten used to not seeing people, right? So you right. can hang a Zoom call or a Teams meeting. You could roll your eyes. You could message someone be like, what in God's name bullshit are they? Sp you can't do that. Anymore. Like they want to put. Harder to do that in person. <laughs> yeah. And my bosses made me like, think about how you could be doing collaboration and more FaceTime with people. And I was like. What part of this are you not getting? <laughs> like, right. you know? I don't know how to be clearer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. But even, you know, like back to speaking of poker faces, um, didn't you just recently post like the Ashley reaction video to her score in Sochi when she did that iconic? I did it, like, but I didn't post that, but. Love her. Oh, yeah. Whatever that was, I was like, I can't imagine a skater doing that now. Damn. Didn't you love her for it? Of course. She it was such an epic moment of that Olympics for, for you the know that she, she once snapped at me um in the mix zone after a practice and then walked around the arena later to apologize. There's just no one like that today, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Amber Glenn saying that she wanted to be on Stars on Ice and now it's canceled. I'm sorry, Amber Glenn. There are 12 people in the audience. Okay. Like this is <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Obviously sad news for the skaters, but I thought like, I, I wouldn't go. No. Jonathan. Not so for everyone complaining about it, I was like rebuying tickets. I think the answer is no. Oh my God. Some of these things get so bad and they become worse over time. Like Kate Penner always messages me whenever she goes to Stars on Ice. And like, I can't go to an empty arena to watch something. To me, like, it, to me, that's worse. Okay, like, I don't want to be in an event where no one is there. And then we're watching something about adoption. Like, I really, I, like, no, no. Okay. It's not it's it. Like, yeah. Not it. Okay. Nasty Lucan. Give us tickets to the tour in 2012. 
This was back when I was still drinking. Okay. Okay. Thank God there was a bar at the event. Okay. It was in Newark. We were watching the post Olympics gymnastics show. And it was like all young girls. It made us feel so uncomfortable. Like we were a bunch of pedophiles. Like I can't, like, and we, we were just like a bunch of queens that just want to see Nastia go. All we wanted to do was watch pissed off Nastia who looked annoyed like she wasn't at the Olympics and even there swing around on that rope to Taylor Swift. It's all we wanted, okay? Wow. Yeah. Yes, queen, <laughs> right? Uh, but you're right. It, like so many, it, it just feels like children's sports and I'm not, I'm not. Well, that's what gymnastics sports. felt like when you go to skating because they haven't actually made a new fan base, it's like watching the nursing home. Okay. Like, oh, I just, yeah. yeah. Like, have, did you ever have a grandmother who's in assisted living? No, but I know people who have been in assisted living. Or like, has your grandmother ever been in a nursing home for Alzheimer's? No. They and they bring in like, they bring in like, um, you know, like the petting zoo, like the Adam, like okay. the for them to pet. And it's like really sweet. And then you go home and you cry about how your grandmother doesn't remember you anymore. You know, like that kind of a thing. Okay, heavy. Okay. That's what it feels like to be out on Stars on Ice. Okay? Okay. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, oh my God, I'm glad that grandma has joy with puppies. And then you realize grandma hasn't remembered me for 10 years. Mm. You know, mm. like that kind of a thing. <laughs> what an uplifting moment. Yeah. And do you know how my grandmother, I mean, listen, this comes ge generations deep, right? Grandma, do you want to pet the dog? I don't want to see any effing dogs. <laughs> then, of course, she forgets, right? Mm. This is Debbie's mother. Okay, understood. Oh, the dog! She didn't even remember that she likes dogs. Okay, <laughs> Ah, that's, that's... Like that with skating. Yeah. <laughs> okay. They could literally bring Stars on Ice to a nursing home and they would have more crowd engagement. Okay. At least people would appreciate what they're doing. Yeah. Tara Kane would have been the biggest star if you brought her to the Brighton Gardens assisted living. Okay. She and Alexa would have been treated like the queens that they are. Instead, they're in empty arenas in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Like, it's terrible, okay? Alyssa Sisney is one of the last great works of art, okay? She's skating like she's Peggy Fleming, okay? Like, find her some rich gays to go watch her instead because they're like, oh, she didn't win a gold medal. Isn't it a shame that Gracie didn't win? I don't know. Gracie was competing against a whole Russian army of athletes that were doping on 70 supplements. Like, get a clue. And cheering in the Olympic arena when she made an error. I don't know. I, I'm impressed, like, when, when Gracie was talking about that moment in her book, I was like, she really downplayed, I think, how difficult that free skate must have been with that crowd. Think about how all Russians have, like, zero self-awareness, right? Think about how Plushenko was posting the 10-year anniversary of when he was clearly doped up in Sochi. Like, come on! And then the marks he was getting, those marks were criminal for components. Yeah. I mean, when he came back in 2014, it was a medical miracle, okay? Whatever yeah. doctor, I hope that that doctor is elevated in Russia, okay? That is a joke, okay? And then he went I'm so glad that Evgeny Man, I'm so glad that he went on to marry a former prostitute who stole a baby from like the hospital. Like, okay, like this is what happened to Russian sports. Like, come on. Like, what a wonderful. <laughs> with, with even the quote when he posted it that, I would have won the individual event most likely, given how poorly everyone was skating. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, maybe they were throwing quads that they shouldn't have been doing because they were trying to compete with athletes who were doping. I mean, Yuzuru Rouhani basically had a planned fall on a quad sow that entire year, which is something Jeff Buttle basically did in 2006. Like, come on, all right? And that's only the sophisticated doping. What about the stuff they were doing before? Arena and her heart condition. How about when I've had Russian coaches and like we weren't doping? I mean, maybe they took our blood out in the summer and then injected it in the summer, but it wasn't like doping. No, not like doping. No, that wasn't doping. I'm so sorry. That wasn't doping then. No, no, that was that's polite doping. Like, yeah. is there... <laughs> Again, the idea and then the idea as a fan that like me just watching a lovely program would require that kind of training is is unsettling unsettling do you 
I will never forget the day that Balieva was convicted and the number of calls I got from Galena, who was shocked. Then she knew, she told me there was no doping in skating. Then she said, what drug was she banned for? Suddenly she knew everything about trimetazidine. <laughs> then she was saying how it's just the coach's fault, <laughs> right? Then I was like, oh, mm -hmm. yes, yes, woman. Mm -hmm. it, for real though, mm -hmm. it, it it's hard to believe because it's shocking. It, it, it's just... I don't think it, it's shocking anymore. I think it's time to like wake up and connect the dots, right? I think it's time for Phil and Christine to push a little harder about... Because uh, we don't have a legal department like, they do, like Christine does, right? Come on. It's time to push a little harder and ask a few more questions about what's actually going on in Russia. Remember that whole exchange about the FMBA hiring Shevetsky and I was told that was speculation? Uh, look at the volume of a verdict. That wasn't speculation. That was research. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so... That was, yeah, <laughs> that was. I don't know where, I don't know where the sport can go from here. It that. really can't move forward and it really hasn't, right? I don't know about you, but I found, I'm sorry. I think my mind is still left. You know how like you get stuck, you know like, how like there's the whole thing about trauma and that your body gets stuck where it was and that different yeah. things bring it up. Yeah. I'm sorry, Jonathan. I think collectively, what is really, like, has anything interesting happened in skating since Trusova screamed at a Terry before she got on the Olympic podium and gave a middle finger with her uh, stuffed animal that she was holding? Like, what has happened in skating that, like, if, okay. If you're, if you were in a coma, or if I were in a coma, okay. okay. You'd be so sad. There would be no internet videos for like ah, two years. There would be so many people that would be happy. So many people, you know, whatever. I wanted to catch up. Jonathan, what did I miss in skating over the last two years? Wow. Yeah. Uh, I got nothing. I got nothing. Okay, the men's event. I no. would, I would just Jonathan, have just names and right. things. Names and things. Come on. That you want on ice or off ice? All of it. That's something that you think that I would care about. Is a Bose tantrum at four continents? Yes. Not tantrum. Or I, I use the incorrect word. My apologies. Um, she didn't show up for the ice and it was like the end of the sound of music. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and Mitch and Justin were running backstage to find her. Number yeah. one. Yeah. I mean, the fact, honestly, pan, wait, the fact that a pansexual won the gold medal for U.S. figure skating and they had to act like they liked it. That would be number two. Mm -hmm. The it's fact that they had, the fact that U.S. figure skating had to promote Gracie's book when she trashed them because they're so down and out after they were trying to sell Claire Seo's beaded bracelets in an auction. Three. Um, Billy Holland and Nan landed a quad axle. Um... Uh, uh, oh, and that Valieva had a program with a hood on it at the end. I think that's probably... <laughs> now you're up to speed. Welcome back. Now Thanks. you are up to speed. Yeah. Welcome back. Yeah. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> right? <laughs> this is... I, I, but it's stuck. Like this, it's stuck at the moment. And it's and stuck I'm... because of the ISU and their rules and how they let people cannibalize the sport. Yeah. What? That I saw doped up children doing quads that got lots of views on Instagram and meant absolutely nothing. <laughs> right? right. It, it, that doesn't interest me. That's not growing the sport. No. And, and I get, you know, there's always those people that like it, but it's a sport and you have to push it. And I was like, but you have to like it. Oh, also that 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 Trusova was the Little Mermaid and now she's going to be Cinderella. I would like you to tell me that just because you know that like personally that would really like make me laugh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we weren't supposed to talk about them because somehow the fans thought that Trusova was in any connection to the war. You know, like in any connection. Right? Yeah. Because... The IOC didn't do the thing and actually banned the Russians for doping. So we somehow pretended that athletes had anything to do with what their leader was doing. I don't know. We had a leader the other night. Um, sorry, our president was stumbling to the podium the other night and we're pretending like he's going to be able to run for another four years. Oh, okay. Okay. This is great. This is really going well. And our and the, and his biggest um and his biggest opponent is a, like potentially going to become a convicted felon. Okay. This is the world that we live in right now. Okay. Like... <laughs> Rule blah 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 does not apply. <laughs> yes, the rule does not apply. 
yeah. you know that that's what's gonna has the Trump would love skating. Okay, do you know why? Because you could do anything you want. Do you know who Trump's favorite coach would be? A Terry. Yeah, because she's the winner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh my God, Jonathan! Oh, you missed you missed one thing that you didn't tell me. Oh no, that Terry is going to be the host of a television show in Russia with thirteen obese women who are trying to lose weight. Yes, yes. And then people, I posted that we were watching it, and they go, "Why are you supporting this woman? What? Supporting it? Watching what is actually happening? Okay. Yeah. What do you mean support? You didn't send her a check to watch it? You know." Weird. I replied to the comments with what I thought. I know. Again, I would like to say, Dave is filtering. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. Yeah. <laughs> it, I, I feel a little bit lost as a fan. You shouldn't feel lost. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. You for should that. watch the show called Big Girls. <laughs> That's not what it's called. Yes, it's Bolshoi Devushka. Devushki? Yeah. Bolshoi Devushki? Yes! <laughs> Jonathan, Jonathan, it opens up. It's actually a really emotional show. I, I would think. She actually has like a very, very small part in it. Okay. But imagine like Russians' lack of sensitivity. A weight loss show. They start with having a bunch of the contestants try to climb onto a bus and they have people trying to push them up the stairs. And do you know what's on the, on the bus when they get in there? A spread of desserts. And do you know what the, but they also had healthy options. And do you wanna know what the first thing a contestant grabbed was? Huh? A strawberry. Okay. And to God, it happened. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then took it with her on a trip. Just slowly <laughs> eat. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And Terry's girls who starve themselves to the point, right? And then are traveling on a train. Are traveling and they are eating a strawberry dessert for three days that might have been laced with trimetest. <laughs> Right, and, and didn't even it say in the report, like, what do you mean a cutting board? Like, you don't even, you don't cut trim intensity if you're an old Who's person. Who's to say, how dare you say that her lawyers are bad? Maybe her lawyers were excellent that they protected the whole Russian Olympic system. Like, by just making this girl and her mother seem like liars. I don't know, yeah. maybe they did what they're intended to do. And you know what? I hope she's, I hope that Valieva is paid off by Putin until the end of time. Okay? And then Rusada was like, we don't even know who the grandfather is. Yeah, you know, and Rusada like and Jonathan. Why did Rusada do that? Are they also trying to throw her under the bus? Because they know. Right. What are they going to do? Yeah, investigate. Yeah. What's there to investigate? I was talking about this with people that don't don't know skating, but have sort of heard about the headlines. And as you have mentioned several times, we have Usada. Usada. How do they pronounce it? Whatever. Yeah. Ours is designed to catch it and monitor it and they're it's like a, they're saying they can, place like, to help hide it yeah telling, it's like if you have the sniffles make sure you look up what drugs is on this system right russia's telling you well if you don't Come drink on over. Come and on then in. too much yeah. potassium you might die because of a heart defect because of the tmz that you're taking think about how many of the conditions that these russian athletes have were caused by the actual drugs that they're taking right It's horrifying. And then they go on, and the more they talk, the more they get themselves in trouble. Sports Room is the greatest website of all time. Yeah, because it's like, they don't even understand that they're giving well, you- it's Because it's a knowing and unknowing, like that they say in 1984, which Rodchenkov also said, because even when I'll talk to Russian journalists and like, you know, like Maya's whole thing is, well, maybe Valieva took something, but I don't think they all were. And I'm like, Maya. You do you have one athlete on 60 medications only. You were, you were a political journalist for Putin. Think of that critical thinking about what his strategies are. It all lines up. That verdict, the Russian affair, the Rajankov affair, it all lines up. Yeah.
Think about the fact of Icarus. This is how dark the world is, right? Brian Fogel, Oscar winning person who won Icarus. We all loved it. Yes. Think about how big of a hit that was, right? How big of a star do you think he's going to be for the rest of time? Mm. Like, how big do you think he's going to be in the film world? Do you think? Yeah, like, how big do you think? Like, what do you think his next project? Like, how many how many millions do you think? Like, do you think that, like... Oh, I couldn't even begin to guess. Like, how much do you think Netflix should pay for him? Should pay him? I, I have no sliding scale, but give him the world. Give him something. Like, let's say, let's say that Icarus had a billion views. How much is he worth, do you think, for the next? Like, what would, how many millions? Like, what would you give him? Blank check? Like, what? You're right? Like, uh, yeah, exactly. You know what happened? His next two projects were passed on and couldn't get distribution. And no one even talks about it and no one even reports about it. Do you know that Icarus 2, the sequel to Icarus, premiered at a film festival in September 2022? It was never picked up for distribution. Nobody even talks about it. There's a Reddit thread with eight comments. And he went completely dark on all social media. What? He produced two films that didn't get picked up. One called The Dissident and one is Icarus 2. You can't even find him. He has a private Instagram. He has a Twitter where he hasn't done anything. He hasn't made any posts on Instagram. What's that story? Dave, this, this is the worst. I have to go to the bathroom. Hold that's on. okay. You know what? <laughs> I will check for TMZ and extrasterone later. Okay. <laughs> you are. You came back, and while you were sitting on the can, you started looking up what Deanna won. Okay, <laughs> tell me, what did she win? Tell Deanna me. won the, uh, let's see. Hold You're on. an old bitch who won something? Special Achievement Award. For what, being old and landing things? The inspirational and trailblazing. Oh my God. Does Gracie want to be called talented? Do you think Deanna wants to be called inspirational? Yeah. Or Gracie did one. not like when her comeback was turned into a feel good narrative for everybody else. 16 years after she was forced to retire due to injury, Deanna made an exceptional comeback as a Paris skater. Congratulations, okay. Deanna. Maybe they could have given her that achievement award back in 2017 when she actually came back. Right. I don't know. Yeah. The, I How do you give her an award for being an amazing, ferocious pair girl who skated to like, I don't know, vampire, whatever, whichever one. Gorgeous lift positions. Gorgeous lift positions. Her award. Yeah. It looks like she could suck the blood out of her partner and likely does at any moment and was but so- Only in the summer. Only in the summer. <laughs> only in the summer. And then she re-injects it in the winter. And then <laughs> they were at Skate Canada and she does it. Like, yes, like give a clue, okay? Yeah. What actual- What do they do? Ari like sits down and is like, I think you should give it to these people this year. Like, of course they gave Ilya Malinin the most valuable skater when it's Ari's athlete. I'm sorry, they didn't even give him the world title. Okay. Well, again, when we talk about these reactions- By the way, we've given him enough awards. We gave him two national titles where he took a shit on the ice in both free skates. So like, I don't understand like why he's getting most valuable. Maybe- but less of one than his compatriots. <laughs> like, that was the thing. Um, yeah, and even, you'll, you'll be glad to know Benoit won Choreographer of the Year. Oh, oh, good. For which program? Which program? Do they specify a program? Is it for Adam, who does well in September and tapers off during the year, every year? Adam's program won most interesting program. Most interesting. They couldn't even say good. Anyway, let's, let's see how they do. They couldn't even use the word that it was well done. Um, I asked you figure skating, which doesn't have many followers. By I way. would like to give an award to I am for saying that the I am is the bastion of integrity. When they like, this is what we're dealing with in figure skating. Like, welcome to the Zoom call. Yeah, welcome um, to the Zoom call. Okay, yes. Most entertaining program was Adam's uh, free skate. That is not the most entertaining program. The most entertaining program is anything that Camilia Valleva does because it's massively inappropriate. The number one appropriate was when someone from Russia thought that they should give a girl a program to the Black Panther because you know how much Russians are so accepting of African culture, right? The number two program that was most interesting is last year when she put a hood over her head. Come on, all right? Christine's most words. 
Yes, using Christine Brennan's words. At least be honest about the awards. Jonathan, what awards would you like to give people? Um, well, I'm curious to get your take, because also- Okay, best, best social media uh, account? Okay, I'm sorry. My Let's write down awards right now. Let's put time on, do we have like Jeopardy music? Do, do, oh my gosh, amazing. I'll give it to you. Can you sing? Can you sing? Do you want to sing? Do, 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 do. What are you coming up with? We're each going to give like four awards, okay? Okay, all right. It's happening. Everybody get your papers and pencils. Um, because the, just so we know, the ones that they have given are most entertaining program, best newcomer, best coach, most valuable skater, special achievement award, best choreographer, lifetime achievement award, best costume. Um, okay, I'm gonna do... Write yours below. Um, wait, I'm trying to think. I should give an award to a guy, right? <laughs> we have to encourage men skating. Oh. This is hard. No. I needed uh, to think about this. I already have four. Um, Start us off. Okay. Best social media account, Paulina Edmonds. Hands oh, down. Yes. Hands down. Agreed. Okay. Agreed. Did you see her dancing in that dance class the other day? Then she did a double axle, triple toe. Maybe a little bit cute, Paulina. But it looked better than anything that was done at US Nationals. I would send you to Worlds. In fact, based on Paulina Edmonds' Instagram account, I'm sending her to the World Championships. I'm knocking off Isabeau. Okay. Based on Amber Glenn, if Amber Glenn does not do five clean run-throughs documented on video between now and then, knocking her off, sending Ava Ziegler. Okay? okay? That's what we're doing. Okay. I'm in. Get medals. Okay. Then I'm Ava Ziegler, no, no, no. If Ava, no, no, Ava can say where she is. If Amber Glenn doesn't move to Raphael for the strict entertainment value alone and realizing what that could do with her career in terms of having an actual coach with personality and experience with her, think about how much the coach adds to the athlete's intrigue and the kiss and cry and their overall media stories. What quote is Damon Allen going to give uh, if Amber Glenn is going to give the Olympics? What quote is Raphael going to give if Amber Glenn wins the Olympics? I'm sorry. I want a former Soviet to coach a pansexual with a triple axel to Olympic gold. Okay, it's what I want. Okay, okay. It's what you want too. Yeah. Think about it. Think you, of the- You don't story. know you want it. <laughs> you don't know you want it, but that's what skating needs. Yeah. I said best dessert. I think best dessert- yes, best dessert. Yeah, is a, is a strawberry dessert sprinkled with- Best bullshit charity. I think, listen, figure skating in Harlem has had its moment, but I think- Tessa Virtue giving an interview to these two girls named Nat and Kat or Kat and Nat or whoever they are. Listen, some of them has some sort of connection that she's obviously um, doing. Um, you know, we want to keep girls in sports. Yes. Okay. Girls in sports. Meanwhile, it comes out the same week that Canada is petitioning their gold medal. And she says nothing about yeah. it. Yeah. And anything that she said, she was like, oh yeah, Scott and I, I think we started together and we were eight. And the girl goes, oh, you're so cute. White feminism, okay? Okay. <laughs> best quote, Gracie Gold. Any any of them. Yeah, I wrote best tell all, Gracie best, Yeah. Best quote, right? Yeah. Scariest pair girl, Deanna. Yeah. yeah. I wrote best new reality show, Big Girls. Yeah, Big Girls, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Dating related reality show, oh my God. Horrible, horrible. At yeah. least it would be more honest than the actual awards. Yeah. Last year, I think Ilya Malinin won where he said that if he were gay, he would get better PCS. I think we all would realize, one, maybe he would actually take a dance class. That could help if he were gay, right? So let's think about this. Maybe what he said was offensive, but if we think about it intellectually, maybe it would yield better results. Think about the fact that his mother's a choreographer where she did the same Aladdin program for three years. Who's yeah, paying her? Aladdin, yeah, we all remember that, yeah. Has anyone, like, Googled her? Done a YouTube search? 
You're hiring her as a choreographer? Girl did have a good lots, but so I would ask her about the lots more than I would ask her about choreographer. <laughs> like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And uh, I think best rule that you don't have to apply. <laughs> yes. Mm. 305 or whatever the number was, yeah. How about Brian Orcs are getting a Lifetime Achievement Award? After they, to me, they owed him after that humiliating video call where he had to sit there while they were just regaling everyone about how great a Terry was. Okay, Lifetime Achievement Award. Christine Brennan applying for credential for Worlds this year. I mean, think of the fun that we can have with Christine there. She could talk to her good friend, Marie France. Mm -hmm. And Marie France will be in some very expensive designer clothes as she's taking Nikolai Sorensen backstage, right? Notice how she didn't go to Europeans with him. Mm. Uh, what else can we do? Um, how about most embarrassing rhythm dance? Oh my gosh. To just one? <laughs> Tim Coletto doing Ghostbusters. Love you the most. Who signed off on that? Yeah. Right? I, I can't. That's, That's, That's not even campy, right? Do you think Caroline is going to be offended if we didn't give her best quote? She gets best read, right? Best yes, read for the Costco line, a hundred percent. Yes, Caroline. Yes, yes. <laughs> and actually, let's order her an award in bulk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, how about um, what else could we give? Um, much least enthusiastic media appearance. Nathan Chen on the Today Show, any and all times. It looks like he was up until 5 a.m. doing his homework at Yale, slept for an hour and a half, and then had to be fake nice with Hoda, right? Yeah. Like that, that's what he does, yep. okay? Yep, agreed. Longest Instagram post, Vincent Joe. Yes, Every always, at any point. Always, right? Um, Repeat winner. <laughs> worst costume, Mm. I would give it to Isabeau's coach for whatever she dressed her in. The the one that was so big, the like so. Dating mother you'd most like to meet, obviously Isabeau's, right? Mm. Okay. Um, also, let's just let's just insert here that it was the ISU awards that when they first tried to give a best costume award, gave it to someone in a concentration camp costume. And then no, was so that, that was only a nominee. That was only a nominee, Jonathan. Oh, he didn't win. Well, because then remember, there was so much backlash and they were like, oh, sorry, that was our error. We meant the other program. And the other program, he was just in a black shirt and pants. And I Best was like, running storyline? When Kostomarov was losing limbs week by week to week and people were texting to be like, did he just, did he lose a foot or a toe? What was actually going on there? Okay, and how do you cover it? Yeah, yeah. And then you're like, well, he's not a nice guy, but I feel bad that this happened to him. Who was he dating or married to or? Well, he's married to Domnina. He okay. used to be married to Julia Lautava. Okay, that's what it was. Okay. Rumored affair with Ala Paseyev's wife to get the marks while a competitor, while he was married to Navka. Um, I think last year, Viktor Petrenko deserved an award for when he was hiding out in Ukraine in a bunker when he should have been fighting technically and wasn't. How did you get out of Ukraine? And then how did um, you get to Russia? And did yeah. Navka pay for it? And did they set you up to say, oh, it's our first Ukrainian champion there? Yes, I think that that deserves an award. That was a great storyline. And all of the fans being like, he's in Ukraine fighting. And you're like, he's in Ukraine on his fat ass sitting in his bunker. What are you talking about? You don't actually know what's going on. So emotional fans, yes, that was a good okay. award. Okay, <laughs> was a great award. Yes, Victor deserves that. Great jump coach. Maybe not a great patriot for Ukraine, but a great jump coach. Okay. Maybe geopolitics, not one of the strengths. Yeah. Great Axel coach. Would ever say anything else. Chris Ward. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> who else could we give awards to? Um, okay. I'm going to say most triggered today, Dave. <laughs> No. 
I see you. You are feisty today. I like it's kind feisty, of but like just like over it's a it. joke, right? Yeah. I'm not like triggered. I'm gonna go finish and do Pilates. Amazing! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! The other day, an Italian coach, and you realize when we do interviews with like a team that has nothing interesting to say, tried to invite himself on the show. Do you realize that in the history of TSO, only a few self-promoting coaches have actually had the balls to try to like text to get on the show? You know that's I not. I don't blame them trying. Do you know who the first person was to ever try to invite themselves in the skating lesson? Corey? Tom Z. And that's why I went for the questions that I did. Because mm -hmm. of some, that little self-awareness, we're asking whatever you want. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. I was like, you want to come on the show? Okay. So then someone from Italy tried to invite their pair on the, and then he goes, well, I can be on to translate. And then he tried to dictate the questions that we could ask. I said, if I am gonna skip Pilates for you, you have to make this worth my time. What, yeah, what and, the, and I love your interviews the most, like, but that's because they get real. It's yes. a real conversation. And obviously those sort I of- I said, if you want to, me to ask their favorite color, I will give you the contact info for Golden Skate. Like, right. come on, okay? Right. Just not doing it. Yeah. That's not this. That's not this, okay? Like, just not, no. Yeah. Come on, it was going to be with Rebecca and Filippo. And I was like, I was going to applaud them for not using- I'm very words. intrigued by them. I like them. I would have given them one of the- like, come on, we would have given them a great interview about her improving her sal cow or the fact that they actually are Italian skaters who aren't skating to one of the five token ballads by an Italian singer that, I don't know, Capolina Lenote, uh, Valentina Marquez and Andre Hotarek, uh, Gabrielle Frangiapani, like every Italian skater skates too. Like, we were going to applaud them for that. Like, yeah, I find them very interesting. And I'm sure they are interesting if you let them be interesting. And then I talked to another person about the gall of this person. And they were like, yeah, that coach was trying to get me to post about the extended lift, but then didn't want his name on the record. So everybody in skating always wants to say stuff, but then they don't want their name on the record so that they can turn around and then say that we're crazy. Oh, okay, that's great. Yeah, that's yeah, good. That's thanks great. for that. Yeah. Thanks, thanks. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hold an edge and look sexy. <laughs> like, come on. Like, these ISU awards, come on, who cares? Okay. Yeah. Anyway, who else should we give an award to? Jonathan, come on. You, come on. It doesn't just have to mean award this year. Think about in the time, even as we were doing a show, like what was award worthy? I'm trying to think of like, maybe like a commentary moment. Like a Sandra Mezik, well, she's happy. Moment. Oh, well, she's happy, yes. And yeah. Sandra, oh, well, like Sandra that. still defends and denies that there was any shade there. And I believe her. You know I that Sandra is triggered? by all of her previous sarcastic comments. You know, she likes to defend. She will, she will, like, yes, she will get very, okay. What's so funny, Randall Carolyn Taylor deserves an award. Who does? She, Carolyn Taylor had a really nice reality show until Terry did Big Girls. I think, you know what, a silver medal for a Canadian feels appropriate, and we'll give Carolyn Taylor <laughs> a silver medal, right? And a jury may get disqualified, but it doesn't mean Carolyn's moving up. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> no. Sorry to say. Okay, yes, Sorry Carolyn Taylor, she deserved it, okay. What else people actually deserve awards? Okay. Um, hmm. Hmm. Best fake acting, Jason Brown still pretending that he's surprised that the audience loves him so much at US Nationals. That always, you know, that, that deserves a mention every year, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, thank God you ditched a program, Jason Brown and Tarzan. Um, I'm the I, one person that kind of liked <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's think about it. Most divisive program, Wuthering Heights. You mm, made it. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, let's see. Worst comeback? Maya Hromik, why did they put that out there? Like, why I was that? I forgot that even happened. Yeah. Um, In a genuine way, like all I, these awards are genuine. I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> it's I, how I genuinely feel. <laughs> short program something. It's like most revamped. No, no, no. Best glow up. Lindsay Thorngren, Sandra Bezik short. Yes, there it is. Skater who should have used the same choreographer for both programs. Lindsay Th Thorngren starting her free program like this. Okay, what is that? Okay. Um, 
let's think. Um, worst skating broadcast, Skate Canada Skate National. Skate Canada National. <laughs> Correct. You know what I appreciate this year? We did not have to hear from that equestrian guy. You know what I appreciate this year? We haven't heard that much from Ted Barton. Hasn't that been nice? Correct. Correct. And subsequently, Rob Black. Can we give Caroline a second award? Yes. Multi-winner. Best mug. Yes. Third award. Don't you like Mark Hine Reddy skating? Mark is a very good commentator. Amazing, but I do I do feel that was more. She was not like so well. Acquainted. Does it matter? Does it matter? We just I want know. To I know. Things. I'm just I'm sticking up for Carol in that moment. But the line was amazing because it could have been read a totally different way. Best comeback, Debbie Thomas. Mmm, nice. Most divisive TSL guest, Shepard Clark. Mmm. Uh, they don't even know the half of it. Okay. Again, the filter is there. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? Wait, who was your favorite interview? Of the year? Yeah. Alex Arashev yesterday. Yes. Okay. That's of this year. What about last year? I mean, Caroline was this year also. I love the Caroline one. Yeah, but Alex took it out for him. He took it yeah. away. Yeah. Sorry, Carol. Carol would agree that she can't come. I talked to Carol yesterday. Okay, we talked about whether Billy should do so solo dance as a second discipline. Mm. I said yes, absolutely, hundred percent. Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh my God! Last year, Freeze deserved a reality show. I mean, those kids looked like they were coaching themselves. Correct. That show needs to be back on YouTube. Where can we find it? The see the first four episodes of Freeze were the greatest things I have ever seen in my entire life. And that girl, Kristen, thinking that Moulin Rouge was an original idea. It's a thing. It's a thing. It was a real quote. Yeah. It was a real quote. Yeah. Well, that was like when Max Aaron told us he was like doing a groundbreaking Carmen. He was. Yeah. So. Um, biggest power move? How about Lori Nickel? positioning Carolina Costner in Japan to work with Yuma Kageyama. Smart. Team Lori there, right? 100%. Um, I think Jojo Starbuck deserves an award. Just for life. Yeah. Life, shady comments, yet being religious, yet just being honest, you know, like- John Curry situation. Yeah, yeah. Um, most authentic yet running into being teased at any moment, Paul Wiley. Continual, right? Just, um, such a sweetheart. Most underutilized coach, yes, we would say for him. Yes. Um, yeah. And that interview that you did with him was exceptional. Oh, thank last you. Year. Yeah. That, that was one of my most enjoyed. But I'm sorry, Paul. Mary Scottfold deserves a better interview than you. Best phone call when Mary Scottfold asked Jenny Kirk why she wasn't married yet. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. That was the funniest thing I've ever. <laughs> funny. That's funny. Um, we did it. We fixed the awards. We fixed the awards. We gave real awards. Okay. There it is. Congratulations. Yeah. We'll be tweeting them. <laughs> Best book, Gracie, right? Gracie. Sure. Yeah. Um, no brainer. You know, Rodchenkov deserved it one year, right? Think about it. Um, yeah. Also, I think we should give Madison Hubble an award. I don't know what for yet. Maybe calling up uh, Christina. Empowering Christina. It's not enough of an award for her. It, that's true. She had best wedding. Y yes. Like wedding I would actually want to attend. Hers. Yeah. Biggest what's going on with your Instagram? Guillaume Cicerone. And that grinder photo he posted the other day with like no caption. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> um, Go check Guillaume's Instagram. <laughs> okay. Right now. I would like you to scroll through Guillaume's Instagram and be like, is this all part of a media campaign with a comeback? 
Is it just the same? Yeah, here we go. Oh. Yeah, what's going on there? I mean, huh. I was like, was well, that a drunk Instagram post? Was that intentional? I don't know. I don't with, know. But we're glad that it happened, right? We're here for it. Wait, hold we're on. Here. Let me yep. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Biggest car crash? The Queen's Gambit program? No, I think it's Montreal this year. Right, oh, like, right. and they're free falling. Just what is happening there? Yes, correct, mm -hmm. correct. Yes, yeah. Um, On that note, my piano tuner is about to arrive at any moment, folks. Uh, you know and what? Speaking of which, maybe it will inspire a Benoit. Maybe it will inspire a Benoit program. <laughs> the <laughs> <of a> tuned piano. <laughs> Hold it, it looks sexy. Bye, everyone.